Today we're going to learn about sequences. A sequence is a list of numbers such as A1, A2, A3, A4, all the way to AN and beyond in a given order. So those A1, A2, they just stand for numbers. So here's our first example. Given that 2, 4, two, four 6, 8, 10, 12, 2 is our first term, so A1 is 2. A3 is the third number in the sequence, so that would be 6. And A sub n is the nth term in the sequence, which would be 2n. The nth term usually gives you the formula of computing all the terms in the sequence. And how we figure out if, it, if the 2n is not given to you, you can look at the pattern of your sequence to figure out how you can get from one term to the next term. So notice I take the number of the term times 2, and that gives me the, the number of the sequence. So a sub n would be 2 times n. An infinite sequence of numbers is a function whose domain is a set of all positive integers. Okay, so positive integers, what we're looking at, so starting at a1, a2, a3, etc. So list the first four terms in this sequence. So starting with n equals 1, if we plug 1 in place of every n, we get 1 half. n equals 2, we get 2 thirds. n equals 3, we get 3 fourths. And n equals 4, we get 4 fifths. This is the first four terms in that sequence. Now let's look at the nth term of the sequence, the tenth term of the sequence. So we're going to replace n with 10, and that gives us 10 elevenths would be the tenth ace of 10. Okay, let's find the first five, first four um, terms of this sequence. So replacing every n with a 1, we end up with a positive 1 over 2. Replacing every n with a 2 gives us a negative term of negative 4 fifths. And replacing every n with 3, we end up with a positive 9 eighths. And replacing every n with 4, we get negative 16 elevenths. So if we want to figure out our 10th term in this sequence, we replace every n with 10. So we notice negative 1 is raised to an odd power, so this is going to make us a negative answer. And 10 squared is 100. And 30 minus 1 is 29. So our answer is negative 129. Some sequences use the previous terms to determine the next term. This is called a recursive sequence. So find the first four terms of this sequence. So a sub 1 is 3. a sub 2, well, the pattern says I take my previous answer and times it by 2. So that means I want to take 2 times 3. So I want to take 2 times 3, which gives us 6. So a sub 3 would take 2 times our a sub 2 term. So this is 2 times 6. Or again, our a, sub, our a sub 2 term was 2 times 3, so that gives us 2 squared times 3, which is 12. a sub 4 is 2 times our a sub 3 term, so that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Or 2 cubed times 3, which is, our 20, which is equal to 24. Our a sub n term then, if we can look at this pattern, we can figure out how to define this where it's not recursively defined. I notice that my powers of 2 keeps increasing, and I'm always timesing by 3. And notice my power of my 2 is 1 less than the term number. So that means I'll do this to 2 to the n minus 1 times 3 would be my nth term of this sequence. One thing we'll be focusing a lot on in this unit is if a sequence or a series converges or diverges. Sometimes the number in a sequence approaches a single value. If it converges a single value, that's called convergent series. So for example, the series 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, all the way to 1 over n, etc. Well, that would converge to 0 because these numbers are getting closer and closer to 0. They're getting smaller and smaller as, we, as our n power increases. Another example of a convergent series is the example 0, 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 4 fifths, all the way to 1 minus 1 over n. And so this converges to 1 because we have 1 minus a number getting closer and closer to 0, so it's approaching a 1 value. Sometimes sequences do not approach a single value, which we'll call L. This sequence is called a divergent series, a sequence, or it diverges. An example of a divergent series is the square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, all the way up to the square root of n and beyond. 
and notice that this number gets slowly gets larger and larger. So this diverges to infinity. Another example is the sequence 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. So this is an alternating series with the nth term as being negative 1 to the n minus 1 power, n plus 1 power. And so this is an oscillating um, a sequence. So if an, a sequence oscillates between two fixed values, it does, not di it does not converge, so it also diverges. So any oscillating sequence diverges, or any sequence that goes, this, goes to infinity or, or negative infinity are our divergent sequences. Next thing we want to look at is we're going to have to find the limit of a sequence. So how we're going to find the limit of a sequence, we're going to rename a sequence as a function. So we're going to recall this a sub n sequence as our f of n, where f of n is equal to a sub n for every positive n number. Then our limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n, if it equals l, a number, it converges, remember that. So if, so let a sub n and b sub n be sequences and big A be the, be the number that, that the limit of a sub n converges to. So the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals a and b be the limit is the value that the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n approaches. So that would be b. So there are some properties or operations we can do with limits of sequences. Well, one thing, if we're taking a limit to n to, as n goes to infinity of the sum or difference of two sequences, that's equal to the sum or difference of the results of each individual sequence. So we can distribute that limit to each term. Okay, if we're doing a product, we can just multiply our results together. So that's gonna be equal to a times b. And a, if we're multiplying a limit as n goes to infinity of a sequence times a constant number, we can factor that constant out and just take that constant times our value of the limit, so constant times a, given that c can be any real number. Now, if we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n divided by b sub n, that's equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n, which is a, divided by the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n, which is b. Now, of course, b sub n cannot be zero, and big B cannot be zero, because we cannot divide by zero. So how can we use this limit? So let's look at this a sub n term, which is n divided by one minus two of n. We're gonna find the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n. All right, so first we're gonna set it up. Limit as n goes to infinity of n minus, um, divided by one minus two of n. Now, one trick you're gonna see quite often is we're gonna divide every term by n. So we can rewrite this a little bit easier to work with. And then we're going to simplify each individual term. So we have 1 in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have 1 over n minus 2. Well, the reason why we do that is now we can do our properties of limit and split those limits to each of our terms. So we have a limit as n goes to infinity of 1 divided by the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n minus the limit as n goes to infinity of 2. Okay, limit as n goes to infinity of 1, that's just 1 because the limit of constant is a constant. And then we know the limit as 1 over n goes to 0 minus our constant 2, so our answer is negative 1 half. Okay, another way that you can do this is you can apply um, L'Hopital's rule that we learned in a previous unit. And so another approach to this is we could um, take the derivative of each one because we have that indeterminate form of infinity over infinity, the derivative of n is 1. The derivative of 1 minus 2n is negative 2, so our limit is negative 1 half, whichever one makes most sense to you. Okay, now we're going to show the sequence whose nth term is given converges. So a sub n is equal to n squared over 2n minus 1, so let's find the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n. I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule. And so the derivative of n squared is 2n. Derivative of 2n minus 1 is the natural log of 2 times 2 to the x. And then let's do L'Hopital's rule one more time. And so the derivative of 2n is 2. The derivative of natural log of 2 times 2 to the x is natural log of 2 squared times 2 to the x. And then notice that the top is a constant and the bottom goes to infinity. So we've got 2 over infinity. And when you have a fraction then, and the numerator staying the same, the denominator is getting larger and larger, that's approaching zero. So our limit is zero. So this function converges to zero. 
Another notation is going to be very popular in this unit is uh, factorial. So factorial, when you have n factorial, that means you're taking n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to you get times by 4, 3, 2, until you get down to 1. Okay. And another definition you need to know is that 0 factorial is equal to 1 and 1 factorial is also equal to 1. So make sure you know that. Okay, now we're going to learn something called the squeeze theorem for sequences. So if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n and b sub n are both equal to L, some value, then exists an integer n such that a, um, this new ser series, c of n, is between a of n and b of n at all times for all n greater than b of n then the limit as n goes to infinity of c of n is L. Okay, so this might be familiar with the, C, uh, with the squeeze theorem you did in Cal 1. Okay, so we need to find an a sub n and a c of n that's kind of related to the integer given here. So I'm going to choose a of n to be equal to negative 1 over 2 to the n power. And then I'm going to choose b of n to be equal to 1 over 2 to the n power. Now the reason why I did this is I need to find the limit as a goes to n, and so that's the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 over 2 to the n, which is equal to 0, and the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n, which is also equal to 1 over 2 to the n, which is 0. So my a sub n and b sub n limit equals 0. Now I need to compare this to the given function. So I'm going to compare 2 to the n with n factorial. So I can see how these terms are related. So if, if n is 1, I get 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial, that's 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6, 4 factorial, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. Let's do one more, 5 factorial, which is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So that's 24 times 5, which is 120. And then let's do to the n. So when n is 1, that's 2. When n is 2, that's 2 squared, which is 4. n cubed is 8. n to the 4th is 16. n to the 5th, or 2 to the 5th is 32. Now let's compare these. So n factorial here is less than 2. So 1 is less than 2. 2 is less than 4. 2 is less than 4. 6 is less than 8. But then it switches. 24 is greater than 16. 120 is greater than 32. So n is greater than or equal to 4. n factorial is greater than 2 to the n. And so I know that negative 1 over 2 to the n is less than or equal to my fraction here, negative 1 to the n, 1 over n factorial, this alternating fact, um, series here, and which is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the n. So then, just like we did in squeeze theorem, we're going to find the limit of all three sides. Now, let's notice that the first three terms didn't work. That's okay. I just write n is greater than or equal to 4. It's what happens where we write n goes toward infinity that matters. And now, I've already figured out the limits of the outside functions, which was 0. We did that earlier. And so, by the squeeze theorem for sequences, I can conclude that the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 1, um, negative 1 to the n times 1 over n factorial is equal to 0. Okay, try this squeeze theorem one. First, let's, what would we compare it to? So I'm going to let my a sub n equal negative 1 over n, and my b sub n equal to 1 over n. Now let's find the limit of a sub n, so the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 over n is 0, and the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n is also 0. So let's see how these two, the n and n to the p, compare. So n is easy. n is just 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. n to the p, well, let's say if p is greater than or equal to 1, um, I'll have n to the first um, 2, um, 
2 to the first, 3 to the first, so that's the, that'd be equal to the given. But if um, n is like p is 2, I'd have 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared. So n would be less than or equal to n to the p, if I think through that. And so I could therefore say that 1 over n is less, negative 1 over n is less than or equal to 1 over um, n to the p, which is less than or equal to um, 1 over n. So then we take the limit as n goes to infinity of all three sides. We've already figured out the outside limits, which was 0. And so our conclusion is, therefore, the, by the squeeze theorem for sequences, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n to the p is equal to 0.